Good playgrounds should feel like part of the community with local beaches, trains, lifesaver huts, tractors and tank stands and sheepdogs running around. Playgrounds aren't just about having some fun, they're also about kids growing up and developing skills. For us at Playworks, it's about giving the child a life experience. We're sitting here on the balcony at St Lucia campus at University of Queensland. I'm here with Paul Clayton, the operations manager of, uh, for UQ Sports. Uh, we met Paul uh, nine months ago when uh, the facilities was uh, bare ground and we're back here to give a bit of an update from Paul. So Paul, what are we looking at here? Richard, we're, we're looking out over field four, the south field, which is, um, we're at the stage now where they're actually doing the edge fencing. Um, we've done the end fence and you can probably just about see the detail of the, the wires that go across that back area. That's the actual fence that stops people falling over the edges because there's no solid, most of the fields haven't got solid fencing. So uh -huh. that's being worked on currently. They're, they're finishing the dugout areas. Um, the guys have been focusing the lights on the field. So we're, we're trying to get to the field of play surfaces to a point where all the major construction work's finished so that Polytown can come in and actually lay the synthetic turf. Okay. The, uh, the lights are all up, I see. And what's the, the Lux capacitor? The, uh, the Lux levels are variable. So obviously being multi-use on all these fields, we will have it so it can be training at 100 Lux uh, and play for soccer at that side, right the way up to 350 for standard play at hockey and 500 for the night Great. competition games. Okay. Now these lights are pretty, uh, pretty interesting in that uh, they're LED, I understand, and one person can change the light bulb. Is that right? That's right, that's right. We've actually engineered this so there's not just future proof, but it's also safety in mind. So mm -hmm. they're AAA Lux uh, lights from Holland. The guys at Jazz Tech supplied them and, and they'll finish up the, the project uh, later on after Hib Electrical have finished installing it. And we've got the poles so that they're set up, they, they cantilever down onto the actual field of play. So one person can literally stand there and actually make alterations to the lights okay. once we're finished. Right. Now this whale at the end of the uh, the end of the pictures, it looks something out of the Game of Thrones. Can, uh, what's the idea behind that? Is it well, artwork or is it just something <laughs> to look good? It's it's twofold. Firstly, the both ends present a risk. Mm -hmm. So um, they're very high in the centre, uh, between six and eight metres, to stop the balls going out as much as possible, right in the goal mouth areas. Mm -hmm. But also architecturally, they add something a bit majestic to both ends to try and make this something that you, you can be proud of. It ties in the edge fencing, it ties in that. It ties in a lot of the detail on the link bridge as mm -hmm. well and around the fencing. So it's, it's, it's one of the few areas that the architect's been able to express sure. himself and create a nice feel. Because what UQ wanted to do was create a great standard of sporting facility, but without having something that stood out too much in the, in the landscape. So the mm -hmm. guys are doing the the roof today of, of the dugouts and, and then they'll get onto the technical boxes, the storage and actually the, the benches, including the, the signage. In the background behind that, down at the bottom level, there's gabion walls being put in so that they can ramp up and landscape at the back of it so that actually the car park, which is key to the success of the facility, is hidden from view, so it's, it's unobtrusive. And that goes right the way along, including 500 bike stations, so you can park down there as well yep. if you're riding. So what's the, obviously, the idea behind putting the dugout on the, uh, well, I suppose in Brisbane, traditionally on the opposite side of, uh, of the turf? Well, there's two things. Firstly, um, visually, it's less of an impediment to these sides. It's not such a big deal on, on, on this side, but this is our gallery for mm -hmm. field four, for the hockey field. Yep. So people will be able to sit along here and they've got no visual impediment to watching the game. So that was, that was a real plus for us. But secondly, we wanted both fields to be the same. And on that field, if we put the dugout this side, it really impedes the view from the UQ Centre and the mm -hmm. gallery. So we felt if we put it on that side, we can put the scores on that, we can put the speakers on that, but also it keeps the playing staff and officials away from some of the more vociferous mm -hmm. spectators, which can be a problem in sport. Great idea. Now, just lastly, there's a big lot of hap uh, work happening right in front of us here. Um, it looks like they're putting another level on a, on a small building. Can you explain? What's happening there? What's that building for? Absolutely. So the um, bottom level and the middle level are functional levels that will provide changing rooms, referee space, first aid, those kind of operational things. Yep. And what they're net doing now is creating a new level, the level third level, which will be the social space that will has bifold windows that open right up down both sides of the building. 
create a fantastic vista for people to come socialise, enjoy the sport, or even we, you know, we'll have functions in when, when there's not games going on. Right, and that's accessible directly from the car park as well? Absolutely, there's, so there's, there's steps both sides and there's a, there's a lift at the side, so okay. it's, everything is fully accessible. Great. So Paul, the big question everyone wants to know is when will this facility be open for training and playing? Okay, so there's been some difficulties in this construction, but the guys are, are making good progress. We're expecting to have the initial handover sometime in, in August, certainly before the end of the normal playing season for hockey, um, after which we'll work with the various stakeholders, including the club, to get the club on there as soon as possible for a, a, certainly an exhibition game internally. We're looking at some social sport with the, with the club um, so that we get everything out of the way this year and know exactly how we operate this facility. So come January, we're up and running, ready for the new season, pre-season training, competition here next year.